Hello, welcome to the Art of Renovation Live. I'm your host, Paul Foster from Contact Renovations and Custom Homes. Today, we're gonna to talk about the art of tile setting. So we've done a show on flooring and tile before in our, in our segment here, or series. But we're gonna talk about tile again because tile is something that, um, there's just so much more to dig into here. And we have kind of a local, we'll call him an expert, maybe a magician, here in Edmonton. His name's Aaron Brown from River City Tile and uh, we would be foolish not to bring him into the conversation. So um, today is going to be educational. We're going to have some great imagery from the projects that, they, that they've that they done as well as uh, talking a bit about um, the products that they sell at the River City Tile Company. So um, yeah, we have a great giveaway item this week. Aaron has graciously and Chelsea of course have offered up a free design consult and $500 toward the tile purchase of your choice. I'm just gonna pull up uh, some information here before I bring Aaron into the call. I don't see him tuned, oh there he is, he's tuned in now, so perfect. All right, we'll get into this in a sec here. All right, so the River City Tile Company, I can see they're here now. I'll send you an invite just a sec, Aaron, I'm gonna introduce you here. So. River City Tile Company was founded by Aaron and Chelsea Brown back in 2011. Aaron has been in the tile business for over 20 years. His love for beautiful ceramics started as a teenager um, when he began working in his family's tile manufacturing facility, helping hand press and paint artisan ceramics. From there, he went on to become an expert tile setter, specializing in custom high-end projects. His attention to detail and creativity have earned him a reputation as a tile setting magician in Edmonton. This is true. We will show you some photos later that support this claim. Um, since the inception of River City, River City Tile Company, Aaron and Chelsea and the team have been thrilled to offer a large and diverse selection of unique custom tile options. And if you go into their showroom, you'll see um, they have a, a ton of different products in there. They have their own line of tile now as well. So anyhow, um, Definitely, you want to talk to Aaron if you have some tile questions, and we're gonna we're gonna pick his brain here. So I'll pull him in. Give us a second. And yeah, when I'm looking at photos today, there are so many amazing photos on their Instagram feed. Um, so we'll have lots of really really interesting photos to show in the background here as we get going. And again. Um, We'll have that giveaway item. We'll talk about it a little bit with, with Aaron, but the skill testing question will be, um, what is cement tile made of? Hmm. Enter your answer in the um, comments and you'll be entered into the random draw at the end of the show. We usually do the draw around, um, a, you know, around 155, something like that. So there'll be some time to enter. Just waiting for Aaron to join into the call here. And we chatted this before the show about how to get in and what the process is. So um, he's a tile magician, maybe not an Instagram call magician. Let's try this again. Oh, hold on here, bear with me. Try this again. All right. Yeah, so uh, tile. There, you know, I mean, if you did we, did we oh, do it, you did it. All right, there it is. you are Welcome. right, Paul. I am not a technical wizard. I can barely send an email, so this is. Uh, I'm pretty happy to be uh, on the call right now. Thanks for having me. <laughs> Thanks for coming on. So yeah, we're we're excited to chat about tile, and as I mentioned earlier, we've had an episode previously when I first started doing these shows about flooring and tile, but I think you know after some reflection i think it was foolish to put tile in the flooring category because tile is so much more and it's really such a showpiece in the projects and and you can get so creative now and i called this episode the art of tile setting because i really believe it's it, it can be an artistic expression and you know that more than anybody so we'll talk a bit about that and then we'll talk a bit about some of you know some of the the technical concerns and pitfalls to watch out for in tile because tile it can look amazing but if it's not installed properly it can cause great frustration and damage so 
okay. I guess. Um, yeah, I guess where do we start here? Let's talk a bit about you. What 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 makes you tick? Why do you love tile so much? Let's hear about it from the. Yeah, why do I love tile so much? I mean, somebody has to. It deserves it. Um, I sort of, you know, it starts with, um, I guess, my love for design and sort of my creative side of things. Tile is such a dynamic medium that it really allows you to never get bored with what you're doing. Uh, like, you know, there's constantly new materials. It's the fashion industry. I'm not much of a fashionista myself when it comes to uh, perhaps my wardrobe. But when it comes to um, staying up on what's happening in the design world, you know, I think we, yeah, it's something that's always interested me. So just sort of like, you know, it, it's entirely passion driven. We're so passionate about um, creating using our medium that is tile. And when you talk about the art of tile setting, it really is, um, it's so subjective and there's just so many directions you can go. You give the guy, you know, uh, two different colors of square tile and you can make hundreds and hundreds of different patterns and, and options, um, which is really what we pride ourselves on here at River City Tile is making sure that, uh, you know, those options are presented to the client and that they know that tile isn't always as it seems. It doesn't just have to be out of the box and onto the floor. It can be um, made into different things like that thing, right? So that starts off as squares and it turns into that, right? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that, that thing is beautiful. And that's, I mean, technically that install is, is not simple. No. For anybody that, if you've tiled tiling at home, and I've done some tile setting in my past when I first started my company, and, uh, you know, I quickly realized this should be left to the experts because whether it comes down to warranty concerns or just like the quality of the install, is everything level, flush, square? And, um, yeah, I mean, that's, I, I wouldn't even try this. That's something that's at the next level. There's, yeah, there's so much to know on a, from a technical standpoint. You know, anybody can lay tiles, you know, flat-ish and straight-ish. Um, but just, I mean, there's more different thin set options out there, for example, than there are like flavors of ice cream at Baskin Robbins. So how do you know which one to use and how do you know that it's the right one for the application? And, um, you know, that's sort of where I've watched our trade sort of deteriorate over the years. The, it's, there's no barrier to entry to be a tile setter anymore. And so, um, you know, a lot of guys just go on, you know, what they've heard or what was sort of like, you know, what they think is the best. And it's not necessarily based on any scientific knowledge or any educational background. There is no longer, a, tile is no longer a ticketed trade. So I definitely recommend, um, you know, even if it, even if the only reason you come to see us at River City Tile Company is to learn what questions to ask your prospective tile setter, um, like we'd be happy to help just to preserve like the industry because it's under siege right now. <clears throat> and I don't want to waste an hour of your time going into that, but um, well, we sort of. I think I think we should go into that a little bit because. A little bit, That's, yeah. I think we need to, right? Because the idea of this show is it's educational. It helps to inform people. And I, and I want, like, hopefully we can empower people to take on a challenge and do some of the renovation themselves. Good on you for trying. But you need to talk yeah. to a pro first. You need to know what, and I always refer to them as landmines. But out there, if you don't do it right, some things really can be like a landmine where things can completely explode based on one error along the way. And tile setting is one of them. And we... You know, we, we're fortunate we get to do a lot of nice, pretty projects. And, you know, even with, like, really qualified tile setters, we've had some problems before. And one particular problem we had was around a curbless shower. So for, if you don't know what a curbless shower is, it's picture your shower. Remove that curb, that little four-inch ledge you need to step over to get into your shower. So everything's flush. And if you don't waterproof properly, that becomes an issue. And so we, you know, the years ago, we learned something the hard way and realized quickly that, oh, wow, there, there's way more to this than how pretty it looks yeah. at the end of the project. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I would say right now about 9.9 .9 out of 10 of our showers are barrier-free or curbless, as they say in the biz. Um, and a lot of those are... I don't know. It looks like he's reloading here. Uh, 
I don't know if I'm freezing or you're freezing there, Aaron, but um, if you can hear me, I guess I'll just keep going here till you come back into the show. Lose you? My back? Okay. We're back? Yeah, you okay, froze sorry, up. We're back, Aaron. Um, so, uh, yeah, so the barrier-free thing. So I would say about 9.9 .9 out of 10 of our showers. Most of the barrier-free showers that we do nowadays are complete retrofits. So in other words, we walk into a room that's a, it's a renovation, the house lady, you know, it was built 20, 30 years ago. And the first thing that somebody wants to do is like to, to create a barrier-free shower is notch out floor joists, which is a absolute 0% no-no. Um, you know, there's all kinds of ways to get the height so that we can bring it back down to the drain. There is a 100% chance, 100% chance that we'll be able to create a barrier free shower in your space. Even if it's in a basement with a concrete floor where it's just solid concrete and you don't want to curb in that shower, I guarantee you we can make that work for you. hundred yeah, percent. We have tricks. Absolutely. There are tricks of the trade for sure. So I guess when I'm getting technical, let's talk a bit about, because like, like you mentioned earlier, there, there's no real regulation within tile setting. So like for us in our larger projects or even the smaller ones, we have an electrician in there, a plumber, there's permits, there's inspections for electrical plumbing, HVAC, insulation, building envelope related inspections, structural, but there's nothing for tile. And it's something that um, really is, is risky, I believe, for a homeowner. If you don't know who you're hiring, you might be sitting on a ticking time bomb. And let's, let's talk a bit about that, Aaron, because I think that, like, where does it start? Like, uh, I mean, I'm gonna just lay the groundwork here. I guess the waterproofing stage is the very first thing. And there's so many different <clears throat> systems out there that are available. And I mean, I guess that's often for me is the smoking gun is the waterproofing wasn't done properly. Let's talk a little bit about that stage. Well, it's <laughs> I mean, that's just part of the problem. So there's basically there's two major waterproofing systems that, you know, most people are familiar with, uh, certainly contractors to be, which is Weedy and Curdy. Um, I will give it to Schluter. They have like a three day course to be certified in their system. Uh, Weedy, you can be certified in like an hour and a half and, uh, and, and actually not even touch the product. And you can carry around a certificate that says I'm a certified weedy installer. So anything, like anything, waterproofing, you know, building a car engine, you're only as good as the person doing it. Um, but there is no inspection. There is no accountability, really. So you're just completely at the mercy of whoever it is you hired and hoping that the guy knows what he's doing. Um, and we're finding more and more and more that, you know, our business is so price sensitive. It's so price driven that... You know, I, I'm trying to figure out for a while, I tried to like brand tile setters as being something, you know, what makes it. No, no. You know, I'm a tile setter and that guy's a tile setter. He's half the price that I am, but the client often, or the, even the contractor isn't educated enough to know what questions to ask to, to determine the difference uh, between the two. And so, it starts at the, at the, at the bot, you know, and, and again, it, it, design wise, that's all subjective, but when it comes to the technical side and like the underlayments and all the stuff that you really care about once, you know, you only care about it if it goes wrong. Right. And um, we've been called in on a few projects where it's been unbelievable what you walk into. So again, like I said, just knowing the questions to ask, I'm not really sure where you find uh, a resource for that. Maybe that's something that I need to work on and just say, okay, before you, hire a tile guy these are the questions you need to ask so um yeah there's there's a lot to the technical side for sure uh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. i guess i mean i would say we'll leave it at that for now is you need to talk to somebody like aaron at river city you need to talk to a professional and there's other great contractors out there too but um you know i think the benefit of going to somewhere like river city is you get more than just that expertise within the installation side of it then you have their showroom and their products we'll talk a bit more about those later in the show okay. Um, you know, and your contractor too, if you hire a general contractor like me, then you should be able to ask me those same questions. If you aren't too sure, you should be able to lean on me. And ultimately in a job that I would take on, the warranty is going to fall on me. If it is a tile setting issue, I'll go back to my tile setter, but I need to make very sure that I've done this properly on my end. So it's all about your contractor should be asking those really good questions to the tile setter to make sure that we're getting what we expect 
which is ultimately what the client wants, which is the job done right the first time round, and it's beautiful and completely functional. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, it's pretty painful. Um, you know, we've been a part of, like I said, some some inspections, some projects where it's like I don't know what to tell you, but you know, tile's not paint. If you mess it up, it's it's a permanent thing. So, yeah, make sure that it uh, make sure it's done right the first time. Absolutely. Sounds cliche, but really, what are you gonna say, right? Yeah. Well, it's very true, but you know, I'll tell you, and I know this firsthand from one or two episodes in our early years is we got it wrong a couple of times and taking tile out. Tile's one of the last things that you want to take out when it goes, yeah. it's, it's terrible. It's heartbreaking. It's, it's expensive. Hard enough putting it in. Yeah. Yeah. And <laughs> it's just the amount of collateral damage that comes with it is significant too. So anyway, we got a comment from Urban Timber. It says, you look familiar. Do you work at Tile Town? Yeah. <laughs> yeah they, they're the best they got everything those guys uh yeah no they're um actually to be honest there's 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 a, they're actually really close to us and, and we use them as a resource sometimes people just want like a quick little cash and carry thing so it's possible that uh urban timber has seen me in tile town i'm glad to know that uh that's where they shop for their tile we'll have to talk to them about that uh in the future <laughs> yeah and no disrespect to tile town we we Not at all. Or two, but, you know, I mean. Not at all. We like refer it, people any, all the time. That's right. And like any vendor, you have different grades of it, and not everyone has the kind of budget to do something that is, that is, you know, on the higher end sometimes. And yeah. it doesn't always have to be expensive, but you need to make sure you get your quality good. So go where yeah. you trust you, the team. Right. Um, let's talk a bit about if there is a homeowner going to take on a, a tile job themselves, Let's talk a bit about some quick things for them to be aware of. And, and one of those things um, I think would be, um, here's a whack-a-mole through a couple of things, but we'll, we'll talk about it more in a sec here. It would be dye lot. Make sure your dye lots match if you're buying tile. That can be terribly frustrating if you don't buy from the same dye lot. Um, well, I know I'm talking about it, so we should probably talk about that for a sec. Sure. Um, so when do you explain that for us, Aaron? Well, uh, you know, so... When tile's produced, it's produced in different batches. And each batch can have sort of a different, and some of them are really extreme. And it doesn't matter if you're dealing with the most high-end, you know, Italian manufacturer, multi-billion dollar uh, operation. Um, it's possible that when they print that picture of marble onto a porcelain tile, that it won't match the next time they run a, run a lot of it. So, uh, yeah, you want to make sure that your, your tile's coming from one specific die lot and that you keep track of that so that if you do have to add on, you know, hopefully you can get it from the same die lot. Uh, it doesn't always mean you're going to run into trouble. More often than not, it's close, close enough to the point where you don't really, you couldn't notice, but it is possible. You don't know. Like, there's no way to tell. It doesn't matter what the manufacturer is or how much you spent on the tile. Um, die lot to die lot, it is, it, there, there can be a huge difference. So it's definitely worth having that conversation. Um, Absolutely. And I, I put this picture up only because it's, it's one consistent color of tile that's here. And can you imagine if, and I've had this happen before, where we ran out, we were short a few pieces to finish the job and we ordered a new box in and the new box came with the, the tile pieces being slightly darker than the originals. And in an install like this, can you imagine if there was three or four tiles that were a slightly different tone? Yeah, I mean, there's time. There's a time and a place for variation, but uh, for the most part, people like their 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 install to look consistent. That's why they choose porcelain right. more often, right? So if you go to Home Depot or any other vendor for that matter, you're going to go buy yourself a whole bunch of whatever. Let's just say backsplash tile for now. Whatever, any boxes of tile. If you're just buying grabbing boxes off the shelf, you better be looking at those labels and making sure they're from a consistent dye lot. Because if they got a new palette that showed up at some point to top up inventory, you might be picking remnants from a previous palette. You you might be in for a bit of an unpleasant surprise later on in your install. So, yeesh. Um, anyhow, so lipids or cupping. Let's talk a bit about that one because I've seen it on some products where we, you know, had a, I guess I'll call it a builder grade product got selected, and in the end we ended up with some really difficult. Um, finishing and these are not my project photos these would not get this far on our end but here's kind of an exaggerated image that will show what what cuppage I guess or lippage cupping let's talk a bit about that I think the picture kind of explains it but let's get your two bits on it 
Yeah, this is something that used to be more of a problem um, when they started coming out with larger format tiles. So a 12 inch by 24 inch tile for, I, I go super nerdy on this, but for anyone that knows anything about ceramics is sort of like, a, it was a huge breakthrough. It's not that in the old days we didn't want large tiles, they just couldn't make them uh, without them having some major issues. And the warpage was one of them. So uh, for the most part, that issue, the warped tiles, the bowed tiles, have, that, that issue has sort of been um, looked after in terms of like floor tile. It is true in that instance, though, the less expensive the material, generally speaking, the better chance. There's all kinds of reasons for that. But um, yeah, like, you know, one of the things that we do at our store here is we make sure that everything we sell on our shelf, we've like made sure that we could install it and it installs well. So we don't have every single piece of tile that's available in the whole wide world. Um, we've sort of uh, curated our collection to make sure that, for example, if I saw somebody drop off some samples and I saw a full piece of it and I looked down that line and it had a warp in it, it's like instant no. Like we won't even show it, right? Mm -hmm. um, and it doesn't necessarily mean that everything in our store is expensive. It just means that, you know, it's not worth showing that. Because if a client does want you know, an offset tile pattern. Um, most manufacturers will, will, will tell you that they don't want you to do more than a 70-30 split. Uh, but what if someone really wants 50-50? And nowadays it's like wedges and clips, right? We wedge those clips and, and uh, that's basically what my industry Uh, yeah, stay away from, from, uh, like the, or if you're, if you're, if your intention is to do a 50, 50 stagger, make sure that you're, you're aware of what you're buying when it comes to the tile for sure. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, uh, the, you know, this, a couple of years ago, this happened to us where we had ordered all this tile, it got delivered to site, you know, two days before tiles start. And we ran a, a pretty tight timeline generally in our project. So we didn't have the option of returning the tile reordering a product it was all part of a grander design and they did want the 50 50 and that's a challenge because like in this image that's like you're gonna have the highest point of a warped tile meeting the lowest point of a tile and it really creates some issues on the finishing right so one option to consider would be the, to change your 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 layout right so if you went with a straight set like they call it here i guess all your grout lines line up really you're not going to have a bunch of lippage at the where the tiles meet but you you know if you look wide angle you're going to have some challenges still with that that finish but anyways your tile layout can have an impact on how well it, it finishes and if you know you have a problematic tile and you're married to it well i think you better reconsider your your layout at that point yeah and like the installer ultimately at the end of the day is responsible for the tile once it's installed and so you know it's hard because you don't want to be the guy that gets in the way of the timeline of the project or whatever, but you know, it, it, it's worth saying something at least for no other reason than just to give the client the option so that their expectations can be managed. You know, if they said, okay, this is what it could look like before we install it. Um, and they say, yeah, I can live with that. That's really the look. I want the staggered. I like the tile. If I got to have a little bit of basket weaving going on, then, then I can live with that. Then it's okay. Then off you go, right? But it's definitely worth having that conversation. Absolutely. Yeah. And like you said, like I think there's a time and a place where the timeline has to come second to quality of work. So I think if this happens, you bring it to someone's attention, look at the product. This is not going to work. It's either a deal breaker, we stop, we select new, or we adjust the layout to make sure that the client's still happy, right? So Yeah, it's interesting because like when I first started setting tile like a long time ago, uh it didn't matter like it was like well how long does this take it take it takes as long as it takes and when we showed up on site it was like all right everyone out of the way the tile guy's here and now it's like we're getting lumped into like the flooring sort of uh installation thing so people are looking for that instant result and and sometimes the quality of the work suffers and and there's no question that um you know we find ourselves sort of pushing back against contractors and and um, not usually the homeowner, it's almost always the contractor or the builder that wants it done. And I don't blame them. Like we all want it done. In fact, usually I want it done more than anyone, but you know, at, at what cost, right? So tile is just one of those things. It's just, you know, like I say, it's a permanent finish. And so let's just make sure it's done right. Do it once. If it takes an extra day or two, like that's just what it has to be in the grand scheme of things. It's definitely worth taking the time. Absolutely.
let's talk a bit about our giveaway. So right. uh, River City Tile has offered up for the draw prize today um, a free tile design consultation and a $500 gift certificate towards the purchase of your tile. So um, Fantastic. our still testing question, oh, it's a tough one. What is cement tile made of? It's a great question. Uh, is it a trick question? Uh, I, don't, I don't think it is, but you'd be shocked at how many people will, would get that wrong. You're right. Well, let's see. Enter your answer in the comments. If you're wrong, we will not uh, ridicule you. We will no. simply move on. But if you're wrong, you're you were not the first person to make that mistake, I assure you. Yeah. That's right. In <laughs> fact, I think I might have made it made the mistake thinking it was a trick question. I got too technical. Anyhow, yeah. so um, enter it into the comments and then you'll be qualified for the draw. At the end of the show, we'll draw your name. You might win that $500 gift certificate and a free teleconsultation. Um, I guess let's just segue into hmm, difference between a tile distributor, flooring store, tile boutique. Nice. Yeah, so Right now in the city of Edmonton, River City Tile Company is, to my knowledge, uh, the only store that specializes in just tile that offers design, engineering, supply, and install. So typically, um, you know, in Edmonton, we've got distributors, the wholesale distributors, and then we've got flooring stores, which carry all the different types of uh, material from you know, your vinyls, your hardwoods, your carpet and tiles sort of like thrown in there. Um, and then you've got, you know, your tile boutique. So River City Tile Company is a pretty unique um, company, um, certainly in Edmonton, but even, even on a national scale, like we, you know, the art tile world is, is what we specialize in. So the kind of stuff you see behind me um, is a very small world. And so it's very exclusive. It's, it's, there's just not a lot. So I would say in Canada, there's probably about five stores that are similar to ours in the way that we uh, approach tile. Um, so it is very unique in Edmonton. Um, it, the line's been a little blurry. Uh, in most industries, a wholesale distributor means they sell to the retailers. In my industry, the wholesale distributor often sell directly to um, contractors, designers. So one of the challenges that presents to us is we find ourselves almost in competition with our suppliers. So um, and I'm going to throw this out there to anybody, if there's a designer watching or even a builder or contractor, um, when you come into our store and you discover a tile and then you find out that it's from one of the distributors and then you say, well, I can get it cheaper if I buy it myself. It's like, yes, yes, you can. But if you, if, if, if too much of that goes on, then all of a sudden we go away as a, as a resource. And um, unfortunately, uh, like it happens, it happens quite often here. We lose projects. Um, and I'm not really sure why the wholesale distributors want to do it that way because they, they're going to get the sale regardless. They're going to sell the tile, uh, whether, whether they, we buy it or whether that client buys it. But um, yeah, like we need to sell tile for more than what we bought it for in order to stay in business. And some people respect that and some people are a little, a little, they're quick to just sort of like head to the distributor and, and, and get their discount on it. So we, we, we're trying to be friendly about it, but I'm kind of throwing it out there now just to sort of say like, it's just kind of a, you know, if you're here at our store, you either shop at our store, you can trust us. We can work on things price wise and everything else, but please keep the, keep the money in house here. Um, mm. We appreciate it. Yeah. You know, I'd like to touch on that because I am a contractor and yeah. And I'll tell you that I went through a stage where I was all about what can I supply myself to save some yeah. money, A, to help bring the cost down for my clients, and B, obviously, I got to keep my doors open too. Where can I make some money on a product? And then I went through that for a couple of years, and, and it was an interesting experience for me because I learned through that that it wasn't worth it, that in the end, whenever there was an issue with the product, that I'd supplied and someone else installed, I had to get involved in the middle and often it incurred warranty charges to me from the installer or, or, and in the end, I've kind of come full circle back to where, you know what, the person who's going to install the product, I want them to supply the product. And I know I'm going to be paying a bit more through them, but through them, they're going to help with the quality control of what's going to be getting installed. And they're going to, there's going to be a bit more ownership of what's being done by them. And I think, 
you know, just, I guess they come back to you now, Aaron. I think that I would, I would support your comment. Like keep, keep, buy it through your installer. Yeah. It, you know, we, we have a bit of a, our leverage point, I guess, is our install. So we won't install what we don't supply. We, we just sort of have to do it that way. Um, just to protect ourselves from, you know, people just going and buying direct from our distributors. Um, fortunately, like for our exclusive material, that's not an issue. It's just sort of the local di the distributors. Um, I would say this, and, and, and it's, you know, everyone's got their own way of doing business, but the, the designers and the contractors slash builders that are, that, that work closely with us and sort of, they just, they don't, they, they're very happy to just let us do the supply and the install. They'll come in, they'll bring their client. Um, I'll say like the most, I would say successful relationships that we have are the clients that adopt that attitude towards it. It's like, man, if you're going to warranty it and you're going to have this store and my clients can come in and get all the advice and, and use your resources that go beyond just the picking out of the material. Um, they're the ones that seem to like, are, are really successful in their businesses entirely. So I, I would say that that, uh, that sort of attitude, I guess, uh, lends itself well to being a successful contractor or designer. When I, again, back to when I first started doing tile, uh, it was like contractors contracted, designers designed, builders built, and suppliers supplied. And um, everyone kind of, like you said, they kind of, well, where can I make a little bit of more money? In the end, it's like, it, it, is, it is ultimately better to just sort of, stay in your lane, focus on being the best contractor, focus on being the best designer. Um, Cause I've watched it happen before with, the, especially in the design community where designers all of a sudden start contracting projects and they start, you know, trying to supply fabric and tile and blinds and furniture. And, and, and it's so much to keep track of that, you, you know, you end up sort of watering down the experience for the client. And I would say ultimately that's, that our, that's our biggest advantage for us is our experience we offer the uh, end user. So, you know, as a contractor or designer, you can feel really good about sending your client in here and we'll look after them and, and enhance the project. Make your life easier, in fact, right? Because you, uh, you don't need to know everything there is to know about tile. That's my job, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, let's, let's pick at that uh, knowledge base here a little bit here. So let's talk about the different that are option, options that are out there now for tile products. So we've got, boy, we've got ceramic, we've got porcelain. And those two, we should talk a bit about what the difference is because a lot of my clients get confused about what the difference might be. We get into glass tile, we have natural stone, we've got encaustic tile, cement tile, thin slab, wood, met, there's a variety of products. So let's start, take us down that, that uh, down the option lane here. Yeah, oh man, you're right. I mean, it's funny, the other day, I, I, I've joked about how if you took old cell phones and glued them to a mesh, you'd have cell phone mosaics, right? <laughs> and uh, and I just saw that the other day. Someone did a column in cell phones. It was droughted and everything. It was amazing. Um, there is <laughs> it is such a dynamic medium, and it is incumbent upon the installer to know how to work with every one of these materials. Ultimately, the fundamentals are the same from tile to tile, but there are nuanced differences in installing. Cement tile that you're showing right now is an ex excellent example. We often say it's like IKEA furniture. You've been installing tile for your entire life, and you think you know how to install tile and I don't need to, you know, worry about like the, uh, the ins and outs of, um, of uh, like how this is done. I'll just do it the way that I want to do it. Uh, you, you'll, you'll probably screw it up. If you're, if you're assembling Ikea furnitures, follow the instructions, dumb yourself down, let it happen. Ask questions like, um, you know, like there is really no book for this stuff. And in, in some sense, there's, you got to kind of, unfortunately, um, you know, ask the experts, uh, how do you gain that expertise? I guess it comes with experience and we have experience in everything we sell, which is, I think something that we really take a lot of pride in is the fact that not only do we have pretty things uh, in our showroom, but we know how to use them and we know how to make them function and make them last. Um, we don't recommend anything that wouldn't last because there's some crazy stuff out there, Paul, or crazy oh, stuff that that's sure just, some of it is just a bad idea. Um, Let's talk about the cement tile for a second. Yeah, because we, it was fairly new to me about I think three or four years ago. We did my front entry at my house. My wife picked a cement tile. It looks gorgeous. Yeah, and she's from Lima, Peru, where it's just there's tons of it there, and yeah, and you see it, it, it you know, it starts looking weathered. It the whites absorb some dirt. It's quite porous, but that's part of the look that 
she wanted because that's how what she grew up with. But okay. on, I guess, I mean, I guess the user needs to know that what to expect yeah. from the product they pick. So let's talk about the cement tiles for a second. And then we'll, we'll move on to say porcelain and versus ceramic afterwards. Sure. So cement tile is a, it's, it's a huge, uh, it's very, very popular right now. So cement tile has been around for 200 years or more, um, but it's centuries old and they've been making it essentially the same way for the last 200 years. So, you know, people question its durability. Um, they question whether it's a trend or something. This isn't a new thing. It's been around for a long time. You know, uh, cement tile trends, as far as the aesthetic is concerned, um, as long as the colors are changing and the, and the styles are changing, it's a, it's a fashion industry again. So I can tell you the medium of cement tile is here to stay. Um, I've been installing uh, cement tile for over 20 years and cement tiles have evolved over time. So when you talk about the white in the background of your cement tile at your house, there was no such thing as white in cement tile in more traditional. What you're looking at on the screen right now is more of a typical cement tile. Little hints of white, right? Um, but lots of pattern, lots of color. That's what a traditional cement tile is. And so the, the dirt hides, right? Mm -hmm. Nowadays, we're using you know, more contemporary designs. So we've got huge swaths of white negative space on the cement tile and you know, lots of like bold design, sort of less intricate, um, less fussy. And so in North America, in Lima, Peru, you know, it's got that whole vibe, right? The light is different, the air is different, like everything about it feels different. You know, in all the cement tile producing nations, you've got uh, Morocco, you've got uh, Vietnam, Southeast Asia, the Caribbean, I mean, Cuba is a huge cement tile producing nation, um, Mexico, all the way through South America. And that sort of like weather worn in look is super popular. And it makes sense in this in the in the context of the space, right? Um, outside of cement tile right now, we often get people that travel and they want their homes to look like their Miami condo. It's like it no, because it doesn't work here, right? Mm -hmm. White needs to stay white if you're in North America. We don't like spots on our apples. We don't like spots. We like our corn <laughs> yellow, right? And so if you're using white tile, we have to keep it white. So one of the things that we came across is a type of sealer um, which actually protects the tile and keeps the white staying white over time. Um, it doesn't mean that the tile doesn't get dirty. It just means that you can wash it off and the white will stay white. And so uh, for people that, that, are, that, are, that are watching that don't know, we actually have our own cement. So the cement tile that you're showing on your screen right now is actually our company, Gion Tile, where the, we're the designers and manufacturers of that cement tile product. So we're very, very familiar with it. We're, we're very intimately uh, involved in making sure that the install lasts and looks good and is um, acceptable by North American standards, right? So... For example, there's the one that hexagon in there that's like got just little black lines and it's the whole thing's almost white. And if that starts to look dirty, it doesn't look cool. It just looks dirty. And so mm -hmm. we figured that out. Um, Cementol is, uh, there was another distributor in Canada that, that tried Cementol as an opportunist. They saw the, they saw the potential that this trend had and um, almost ruined the entire Cementol industry in Canada with their, ineffective uh, ability to counsel people properly on how to install it. And so Gion Tile has come in and sort of been doing a lot of damage control um, in the Canadian provinces recently, just trying to explain to people it can be installed properly and it can look good for a long time. Um, you just have to do it right. And that, you know, your, your bad experience was because it was uh, not properly installed. I, I wouldn't even say installed. Installed is, um, it could be properly installed, but you just didn't use the right sealer. Okay. Right. And that's the, uh, that's the biggest difference. The sealer is everything in the cement top. So, yeah, I would uh, say that's kind of kudos to you guys also for, you know, helping to educate people too, because I know when I bought my tile, I went, and this is classic, you know, I went straight to the store and I bought the tile and I wasn't given any advice as to how to properly seal it. I was yeah. told you need to use a sealer, but wasn't told what products was up to me to figure out what product to use. Yeah. And, um, you know, I was, on, I was kind of on my own. And I guess, you know, now I would not have that same problem because I would That's talk it. to you and right. I know what to do. And especially yeah. if it's from your line, then, you yeah. know, obviously there we're going to piggyback on, you know, you know, it intimately, then I would take your advice. Absolutely. Um, 
let's talk about porcelain versus ceramic tile with the differences because I think it's something that's confusing for some people until you take a minute and learn about it. Okay. Well, um, I try to make it as simple as possible because again, I could go like super nerdy molecular on this thing, but um, ultimately they're both ceramic tiles. Porcelain is a type of ceramic. It's just um, a more refined clay body that's fired at a higher temperature with less impurities. And because it is more refined and fired at a higher temperature, it, it essentially becomes more dense and less porous. Um, it goes through a process called vitrification, which essentially is when clay gets cooked to a certain temperature, um, it vitrifies, which means it basically becomes glass. Glass doesn't absorb moisture, right? So that's basically what porcelain is. Ceramic, on the other hand, is a more, um, it's just a different type of clay. And so for floor tile, which is probably where the biggest questions come in, what's on the screen right now is ceramic tile. Um, you couldn't make that out of porcelain uh, with the glaze, the type of glaze that's on there. And, and um, it doesn't mean it's better or it's worse. Porcelain tiles are better for certain applications than ceramic tiles and vice versa. Um, so a porcelain tile on a floor is basically all you would see today. At one point, there, there's, there's an ingredient inside porcelain called feldspar, and feldspar is expensive. And so that's, for a long time, uh, you know, it, porcelain tile was like a luxury thing. Like you would say, oh, this tile is porcelain. And now people are really proud to say that their tile is Italian porcelain, which is, doesn't really mean anything. Um, <laughs> except for that it's like from Italy and it's made out of porcelain. It doesn't mean it's better or worse. Uh, but porcelain is a, uh, it's almost impossible to find ceramic floor tile these days. Um, it's just that the manufacturing of porcelain has become so efficient and, um, and so cost effective that um, you'd almost have to go out of your way to find ceramic floor tile. But ultimately it's just a durability thing when it comes to flooring. Um, the technology that's involved in making porcelain tiles. I mean, we're doing, we're doing porcelain tiles that we're using on the floor now that are five feet by 10 feet. Wow. So even in, the, even in the picture that you've got right now, that's a combination of porcelain and natural stone. Um, we used, you can see along the edges of those columns, there's actually 10 foot. I like how I'm pointing. Like you see what I'm pointing at? <laughs> Unbelievable. Uh, I'm just like the worst at this. Okay, so like the, 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 along the edges of that hallway are 10 foot tiles essentially that we cut from slabs. The, in, the uh, white on the middle is cut from those slabs as well. And it's a, it was half the thickness of the dark material. So we combined porcelain with stone and two different thicknesses to create that uh, hallway. We did that because the stone was the exact right color of stone and the porcelain was the exact right color of white. They just happened to be two different, you know, materials. But ultimately the, uh, you know, it, you, you, you couldn't make a 10 foot ceramic tile. Um, it would have to be porcelain. There's a lot more flexibility in the medium when it comes to engineering that type of material. All right, let's, uh, let's take a minute here and we'll just talk about the giveaway again, which is getting closer to the end of the show. So thanks so much to Aaron and Chelsea over at River City Tile Company. They've donated a free tile consultation and $500 gift certificate towards the purchase of your tile. Um, to qualify for the giveaway, you need to answer the skill testing question, what is cement tile made of? I've seen the answers already riddled through the comment section, so it shouldn't be too tough to get that one right. Um, then we'll, uh, we'll do the draw here in about 10 minutes or so towards the end of the show. Awesome. All right. Um, let's see here. We talked about porcelain. Let's just start looking at some of the stuff you guys have done. I know we had a bit of a script here, but there's just so many beautiful pictures here. I want to show, uh, the custom tile work you guys have done. This is at the Holy Roller. Um, it's a shame those guys aren't, uh, aren't still <laughs> up and going, no. but, um, that project was awesome. There, there, we actually, if you go to Holy Roller's Instagram page, you scroll through at one point, people got married. There was a wedding ceremony held on top of that pineapple. Probably the proudest moment of my entire career. That's like <laughs> unbelievable. Yeah, that was a cool project. That was another one where the, you know, the, the restaurant owner mentioned something about a pineapple. Um, kudos to Lindsay Seth Pro if you're watching. Um, she did a really good job sort of trusting us with the overall aesthetic. Um, she just sort of like held, fell back into our ideas and, and uh, we love it when, when clients do that. That's 
Same yeah. restaurant, yeah. yeah. Yeah, there's the bar. It was a beautiful space, absolutely. Uh, I mean, there's so many here. I'm gonna just going to start going through these pictures. You want to comment on them, then feel free. Sure. Um, some of these are just top products. Some of these are just kind of classy finishes. I like this one, getting yeah. cozy. It's a yeah. nice way to finish off your fireplace. Yeah, that was a client, a uh, great client. She's a uh, uh, Northern Style is her Instagram handle. She's a, a lifestyle blogger, and she wanted something Insta-worthy. So there it was. Yeah. Nice. All right, is, this is going to go. Get naked. I like that one's good, too. Yeah, implied consent. I love it. Yeah, there you go. Um, let's see here. There's, there's so many pictures, man. You guys, you're, if you haven't checked out um, River City Tiles Instagram, you should go take a look. There's like so many beautiful photos there. I don't even know where to start. Look, there's just cool stuff all over the place here. Tell me a bit about what, what is this? This is, it looks like obviously a washroom in a restaurant, I'm going to assume, or a hotel or? Yeah, so again, you know, the, the restaurant is uh, challenged us to come up with a cool floor design that would be, um, you know, that people would come out of the washroom and be like, have you seen like inside the bathroom? And, uh, you know, they did it on a tight budget. We picked the black stuff is actually granite from Home Depot. And the white tile is a marble that was a like a mist. It's real marble stone, but when it came in, it had way too much pink in it. I mean, it's a pink bathroom, so it worked perfect for us. So, you know, the client came to us with a budget and they and, and, and it's sort of a loose idea of what they wanted. And we were able to, um, you know, figure it out and cut it up and make it into something one of a kind. And it wasn't like stupid expensive. I, I would like to say that for anybody watching, um, River City Talk Company has this reputation as being like really expensive. And I actually just recently heard last week from a client who um, had somebody else install their tile. Uh, it went bad. The manufacturer recommended us to go in and fix it. Well, that person that supplied and installed the tile didn't like that they had mentioned us. So um, the client was told that we were way overpriced and we only do the same thing everyone else does. We just charge more. I assure you that is not the case. <laughs> if you ask us case. to just... If, if all I was doing was shoving wedges into 12 by 24s, uh, we would be very, uh, you know, we'd, we'd be competitive price wise. But when people ask us to do stuff like that, it's a different story, right? So there's about $16,000 my cost on brass and copper in that installation that you're looking at there. All water jet cut, all designed in house. That was like another one of those restaurant projects where they kind of just trusted us to do something cool. Yeah, amazing. Yeah, even like floor transitions now too. That's something I guess we could talk about for a second here. But I love, how, you know, I mean, how you were transitioning from tile to, I'm assuming that's hardwood there. Yeah. Yeah. Nice no, way to do it. I've never understood why, and I'm playing with my pen. I've never understood why it's like hardwood and then they have to put a piece of metal now before they put the tile. Like I've never, hardwood and, and the, if you put the tile next to the hardwood it's nice right I don't know what the metal needs to be there for um, so this type of transition we've got this beautiful brass inlay that matches the rest of the brass inlays and when people ask us what did you use for brass and this is brass um, this is in our showroom you can come and see it uh, we kept the brass in the brass um, but yeah so these transitions had we not used the brass um, that transition still would have stayed intact with the hardwood. The metal is there purely for aesthetic purposes in this case, but we've heard over and over again in my, you know, for a long time I've heard, well, you need to have a piece of metal between hardwood and tile, and I, I don't know why. You don't need a piece of metal in it. Yeah, yeah cool I stuff. I like, that, I like that look with the hexagons. And you know what? It's funny because it looks like it's this really complicated thing, but we always want full tiles, right? That's the ultimate goal. If you get a full tiles everywhere, it'd be the best, right? And all you're doing there is just keeping the hexagons intact. So it's just like full tile. Yeah, it's good. Yeah, it's a great finish. And just, you know, I mean, tile, and I guess is part of why I, I thought like the art of tile setting is because, you know, like look at this backsplash. It's not a great wide ankle shot here, but you know, the tile can just bring such a nice punch of color and design and it can really just change a space, you know, and, and uh, this is a great example of that. A really, really, really expensive backsplash is probably less than like 3% of the cost of a kitchen when you consider yeah. everything that goes into a kitchen. And it doesn't need to be expensive to make a big impact. But as the cost of like, as a percentage of the cost of a kitchen, there's no more better bang for your buck. You know what I'm saying? And it's not a biased opinion. And we, we win every time. I get these countertop guys that think, 
you know, the people go in and they look at these slabs on these vertical planes and they want that slab to be the focal point of their kitchen. But when you cut it into a countertop depth, depth and cut the sink out of it and the stove perhaps, and then you lay it down on a flat plane, it, it, it's not really in position to be the focal point. And I'm not suggesting that ca nice countertops aren't nice. What I'm suggesting is don't be afraid of using really cool tile with a really cool countertop. They don't take away from each other, right? They, uh, they sell it. I mean, look at that thing. Golly, that's a nice. No, I agree. And it's a, just a touch on that too. Like our, our average backsplash tile budget on our kitchens that we do is somewhere in about $2,500. And our average kitchens that we do are somewhere in, you know, say around the sixty to seventy-five thousand dollar range, right? So, right. and of course, like we get some backsplashes that are significantly more, and and some people just want a simple subway tile, yeah. even though we're putting in like, you know, it could be on it could be a hundred thousand dollar kitchen, but they still just want a simple subway because they love the look. Yeah. So it's not about how much you spend on it, but I, I agree. Like, make it pop, you know. Like, it's it's just it's so amazing what you can do with tile now. What products are available? The valuable piece of real estate. Yeah. And like, there's so many different options now. And, you know, if you get a talented installer, like, man, the world's your Yeah, and you can tell too, right? Like, when, when we look for tile guys to do our installs, you know, you get a guy that opens a box of, like, funky sort of handmade tile. And you'll get some guys that are like, oh, really? Like, really? And they kind of shove it around like they got it, you know, it's, it's a pain in the ass because they got to, it's going to take time and thought and effort and everything. And then you get some guys that open it up and they're like, oh man, like I can't believe I get to work with this stuff. This is so amazing. And they're like grateful for the opportunity. It's not unlike carpentry, right? You can get a guy who goes his entire life, you know, stapling MDF casing to drywall. And then all of a sudden he gets the opportunity to like, you know, make a beautiful piece of, you know, table or work with real wood. And it's really exciting. You know, you get a chance to work with like the real deal and you know, that's really what we push around here. It's, it's more about value. It's not necessarily about the cost of something. It's the value of something. We see a lot of value in, in the real deal. I mean, a mosaic like that is around the $500 square foot range. So you're probably not doing your whole house in it, but just to have some, a piece of art like that, that is as timeless and as, as beautiful as that is, um, you know, people, people will find it. They just need, they need to be empowered our job is to take people's three hundred dollar budget, uh, backsplash budget, and turn it into three thousand dollars. And uh, we can do three hundred bucks. By the way, like we've got the two dollar tile here too. But um, uh, yeah, I mean nobody's ever you know installed a, a, a beautiful handmade tile backsplash and come back to us and say you know I just didn't feel like I got my money's worth. Uh, more often than not, the next time we hear from them, it's because they want to do something like that somewhere else. So. Mm -hmm. Yep. It's a lovely, it's a lovely experience. One thing we should do is probably open up for questions here. If anybody has any questions for Aaron or myself, feel free to shoot them off in the comments. We'd be happy to, uh, to address them for you and hopefully answer your question. Um, yeah. So, sorry. You'll have, to, some... you'll have to read the pictures or the, any questions off to me though, Paul. I've got my, <laughs> I've got my cell phone shrink wrapped to a pallet jack handle right now <laughs> coming to you live from the handle of the pump jack um so i've got i can't really see through the shrink wrap exactly um what people are saying but uh i um you know there's just so many questions when it comes to tile and i don't know if i can you know if you could if you could possibly it's like say something funny you know what i mean it's like ah there's just so many funny things to say yeah, no but uh, yeah, with tile, I mean, ultimately, at the end of the day, it is, it's just such an enormous medium, which is why, you know, off the top, we kind of talked about how flooring stores and, you know, I've got some great relationships with some of the flooring stores in the city. And, and uh, if they were all in this room right now with me, I would say this exact same comment. And I've said it in front of some of them before, but it sometimes it's almost like at a certain level. Okay. So when we start getting into like really high end homes, and um, uh, high-end renovations, or even just like small renovations, but they want something really, really nice. If we're not presented as an option, so if you're a big time high-end custom builder, um, it's almost insulting to me that those people have nothing but the specific flooring store that that contractor or builder 
deals with, that's your choice. You go there and you get it from them because there's too much to know. There's too many options. And, you know, whether I, I like I said, if, if anyone want, just wants to call me just to ask me what the questions they need to be asking of their, you know, my builder is sending me to this place, you know, what do I need to know? What do I need to mm-hmm. ask them? Because there's just, it's just so overwhelming. Um, you know, and that's saying, I'm saying that as somebody that, you know, spent his entire life trying to figure this thing out. So I've got a long ways to go. <laughs> well, you know, I think, I think it's, that's a good starting point, Aaron, you know, as far as if you're out there, you're considering, you know, you're maybe you're in the middle of a custom build now, or hopefully you're not in the middle of it. Cause if you are, it's maybe too late, but um, if you're th- considering a new build, you're considering renovation, you know, whether you have your own contractor, whether you you're doing it yourself, you have your own designer. I think that you owe it to yourself to reach out to River City Tile and have a conversation with Aaron. Um, Love it. He sleeps there on the couch in the lobby. He doesn't leave. That's and true. you can you can get him at any time. But we actually, uh, I'll, I'll interrupt you just a sec, Paul. We, we actually, I'm not allowed to have a couch in the shop because otherwise I literally would probably end up sleeping here. So I wouldn't I'm here. Surprised. Come see us. So there's yeah. this information on the screen if you have questions for Aaron then by all means uh, River City Tile Company that's his handle um, Facebook and Instagram the numbers are on the screen there 488-5711 for the giveaway draw today um, just the note you need to you need to live locally to be able to um, take advantage of this It'd be pretty tough to do it I guess you could do it in today's um, video consult world but in any case, we'll do last call on the giveaway. It's a free design consultation with River City Tile. It includes a $500 gift certificate for your tile purchase. Skill testing question is, what is cement tile made of? We'll be posting the winner here just in a couple minutes. Um, you know, I just want to say, Aaron, I, I we've been texting a little bit, you know, leading up to the show here, and it, it was something that made me chuckle and, and it was a heartfelt chuckle with some of your answers within how detailed and you can tell you got this passion about what you do. And, and I love that because without people like you out there that are, are inspired and passionate, I think that we all end up with the same thing and it will lack luster and um, you know, good on you. And uh, I'm a fan and uh, we'll uh, hopefully get to do a bunch of work together in the future here. Let's do it. Well, thanks for having me. Um, yeah, anytime we get a chance to talk tile, like I'm down. And uh, yeah, that's great. I appreciate it. Appreciate yeah. you having me on the show. Oh, you know, oh. I got a question. Hold oh. on a second. You know what? My, my comments anyway. thing was scrolled up and I couldn't see that there was stuff coming in. My goodness, okay. I missed a whole bunch. We might not have time for all these, but I'll start with the oldest one I could see here. Uh, if you had an existing tile floor on heated slab, you want to change up. What would you try to re- would you try to remove all the tiles or just go over top? Um, I would suggest that if you can go over top, then go over top. Um, there's a lot to consider when you're going tile on top of tile when it comes to door clearances and appliances and everything else. So I'm not really sure exactly what the um, what the uh, circumstances are but if it's a heated concrete slab or gypcrete slab with a membrane on top of it i might say you know give it a shot but if you can avoid ripping tile out then yeah tile on top of tile works very well good good okay i got julie b uh yxe i'm looking for tile from my fireplace surround and i'm drawn to some of the fluted tile i'm seeing what would you recommend doing on the top flat surface or wrapping the sides in a fluted tile uh the top i'm not sure exactly what the top means but i'm assuming um the top means like you've got your hearth and then above um yeah man the fluted tiles are are super popular we've been doing our own version of fluted tiles for a long time um but right now like what they're doing with some of the technologies in 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 marble and terrazzo is like unbelievable so we've got lots of fluted tile options to to look at at the old river city tile company so come have that conversation i love the idea we've got one called the pinnacle it's like a kind of a triangle it's on our instagram page uh the idea if we did like a fluted piece coming up and then a mitered corner and then the fluted piece going across the top like a simple little like ring around the rosy with that mitered edge in there on the oh man like 
first person to do that wins. Let's do it. Right. Sounds like someone needs to get a hold of you directly for uh, some recommendations. So the winner today is at CatJan8. So I'll reach out to you directly. Congratulations. We got yeah. 15 seconds until Instagram kicks me to the curb. So Aaron, thanks so much for thanks coming on the show. It's been a great chat with you. This you has bet. been the Art of Renovation Live. Aaron Brown from the River City Tile Company.